Hey guys, Justin here with The Way We Roam. Today, I wanna to talk about a new piece of kit that I am taking with me to New Zealand, and that's Moscow Moto's Reckless Kit. So the cool thing, it's reckless, it's with a little play on words there, but it's a rackless system. So that means that you don't need to buy a rack to install on your bike in order for this to work. It just wraps around the bike. This one is very adjustable. This is a version four. There's a whole lot of really cool new features on this thing, but I'm not really gonna get into that today. What I wanna talk about is the use, why I would have one of these versus having panniers and why I'd have panniers versus one of these. So the big thing is, is that I've traveled over to Indonesia and this thing is kind of universal for any bike. Since you don't need a rack, it works on pretty much any bike, which is really great. And another thing is, is that it's easy to stow. So it's, it compacts enough that I can put it in another bag and travel overseas with it. So the system is made up of these dry bags essentially, but it has these dry bags. There are three of them. Plus then there are these auxiliary pouches on the outside here and they come with their own dry bags. I don't use the dry bags necessarily for all that because I put my tripod and a few other things in, in the aux pouches, but they also come with dry bags. So there's three bags. The way that I like to pack these is one is sort of like my clothes and my personal belongings. And then on the other side, I'll have my camping gear so that everything's easily accessible. I can pull everything out with one bag. This top one is gonna probably have my camera gear in it. So that one's just getting in and out of quickly. If you're not shooting with camera gear, this is also a really good one to put your, your sweater or whatever. If you need to layer up and down, it's easy to get to up here versus having to pull this out. And another nice thing about these is that they have this beaver tail. So let's say it gets really hot and I just wanna take off my jacket and put it on the top here, or I wanna put some sneakers in here. It's easy to kind of stick them in here. So that way, when I get done riding, I have a pair of sneakers to walk around in. Overall, like these things are just really handy, super easy to use. And the setup, I will show you how to set it up on a Pan America. That is actually something that is a little bit challenging but uh, especially on a stock Pan America. So when it comes to setting this up on a stock Pan America, there are a couple little cheats that I can show you, but you're gonna wanna be able to pull this thing as far back as you possibly can so that it's not riding on you and that there's a good angle on this. So I will get into how to install this. Okay, so a couple things I do wanna talk about with the Reckless system, and that's that down here, it's gonna attach over by where your foot pegs or passenger foot pegs are. There needs to be a good angle on it. And if you look in here, you can see that you can actually change the angle of how the reckless system is. Look at the instructions that Moscow has, but you're gonna want there to be a bit of an angle on this. And as, as far as it going back, I mean, you don't want it to go super far back, but it needs to have enough area to be able to cinch down these straps in the front. And then there's some straps in the back here. The way that they set up the straps on here is really nice. I mean, and they're cinch straps, so they do tighten down. Another big feature on the new version four is that this piece of it, this layer here is a composite now. And apparently that really is, it's helping with wear and tear, keeping your gear from bouncing around too much. So that's a new improvement on things. I wanna show you guys how these straps are actually supposed to be done properly. This is where I messed up in Indonesia. But you can see right down here is the strap. A lot of people want to go around the outside and that is incorrect. It actually t attaches to the top. Normally we tie a, a dry bag, we roll it and then we tie it to itself, but not with these. It actually goes down to these straps like that. So don't be that guy. Cause I know I was. All right, and here you can actually see that I have this strap down to the back of the bike here. And again, in another video, I really wanna show how to fit this on a Pan America properly. This is just, I was unpacking for my New Zealand trip. So I just wanted to try to get things a little bit together so I can stack it all up. But there are these straps in the back here and these are made to be able to cinch down from the back. And in this case, we wanna be a little bit further back. So on my bike, I actually have an extended piece for the luggage rack and that's what we'll be having in New Zealand. So we can really pull these straps further back get a better angle, get more of that strap that goes down to the foot pegs. So there are two, actually there are three here. And if you come over here and look, you can see that there are some screw holes in here. This is for their noblin. So right now I know that Moscow has been 
kind of sold out on the Knoblins. But the Knoblins really cool because what we can do is just drill a little hole here. There's essentially like a bolt that sticks up here. And then on the top on this, there's a receiving end. And so it just clips right in. And then you don't have to worry about these straps. So hopefully at some point we'll have that set up on Maggie's bike. But for now the straps work. You'll also notice that there is Velcro on the Stinger here. That's so that we can put that in place. There's a strap that's part of this beaver tail right here. And this beaver tail, this is really nice. You can put some accessories in here like zip ties, spare parts. You can see I have extra straps in here. Or sorry, I have extra buckles in here. I don't really use this moly that much. I'd like to get more into it, but uh, there is a ton of it on these bags. It obviously looks pretty cool, but this is a great way to be able to attach your gear to your bags. And in this case, they've actually made this, it used to only be one direction, now it's multi-directional. So now you can attach your moly going up and down or side to side. See how it goes through here on the black ones or these brown ones here. So that is super clever. That way you can put something sideways or this way up and down. And man, Moscow really does think of everything. Some of you guys have seen how on my panniers, I have a cool little bag here that holds my water. It's a water bladder. And then on the bottom down here, there's a hole and you can actually refill your water. I don't have that set up on this because I'm just gonna bring a water bottle, but it's really handy. That is super nice. I think when you're out traveling for a few days and you're having to refill water bottles, just having one right here is super money. The big thing for me when it comes to having a reckless or rackless system versus having a pannier is that I do like how easy it is to get in and out of the panniers. And I don't really mind leaving the equipment on my bike. Personally, I drop the bike a lot. So I like to actually have the rack to be able to pick up the bike. Uh, and you know, overall, I think it's a little bit easier as far as like getting in and out of your, your bags. Like this thing, there's a whole process to opening it up. And also on top of that, it's like stuffing a sausage. So having a pannier, you just have a big open top case basically that you can unwrap and reach in and your stuff is much more accessible. And this is like a very narrow sausage casing that you're filling with all your tents and whatnot. So. That's my opinion as far as like having panniers versus the reckless system. But when it comes to traveling, you can't travel with your panniers easily, not like this. All right, that's enough out of me. Why don't we get Maggie to talk about how she's using this on her new bike and why? Some people know this is a relatively new Pan America for me. I have not had a lot of time to get it set up. I think with less than 100 miles on the bike, we immediately hit the trail. I'm excited about this reckless system and to use it on my bike because I don't have a rack. I don't have all the things that I'm gonna set this bike up with yet, but I am not gonna stop going out and camping and having adventures. What's nice about the reckless is like Justin said, it could fit on any bike with whether they have a rack system or not. I'm pretty excited for some of the BDRs we have coming up. I think this is the way I wanna go. I'm not really interested in putting panniers on the bike for that. This is a little bit lower profile. I feel like it's a little bit lighter. So I am excited to be rocking this stuff. And full disclosure, we work with Moscow Moto and we do that because they really do have the best stuff out on the market. If I'm not using the Reckless 80, I actually have a Scout 50 liter. I really like the Scout 50 liter because it's more like a duffel bag. When I have the Black Dog Helo pad on the back here, it's really easy to strap down the Scout, something that can quickly take on and off the bike. And I'm pretty lightweight. I'm not toting a ton of stuff with me. So if I'm not rocking that, I'm gonna be using this Reckless. But yeah, plenty of reasons why you would wanna use this on your bike or while you're traveling. This is one of the most versatile sets of equipment. I do like that this is pretty easy to take on and off the bike. Like if I'm out on a trip, I'm gonna put this on here and then I'm gonna get home and I'm gonna take the whole system off because I'm gonna be back on the road the next day. So <laughs> cruising around town. Yeah, they just came out with this new colorway. I'm pretty stoked on, but they have options for everything. Justin's bike matches some bags that they have real nice, but these are pretty good looking, good looking bags. We shot a bunch of stuff for Moscow when we were in Indonesia and they sent me a video on how to install these straps correctly. And it really isn't that hard, but for some reason it is, because they had to make a video about it to begin with. 
and I still managed, even after they sent me like instructions and everything, I made I did the wrong thing the entire trip. So I'm gonna make sure that this trip, I don't do that. If you wanna travel with the best, this is the best gear out there. For sure, and hands down. For all types of travel, whatever you plan on doing, they've got something that's right for you. We rock it, we've rocked several of these bags all over the world and really impressed by the stuff that they make and will continue to be using this on our Pan America adventures. Yeah, and the big thing with, with Moscow is that these guys actually really do go out and test this gear. It took them two years to come out with this version four. And there's a lot of improvements and I'd recommend going to their website to go check out some of those improvements that they've made on their last version. And overall, it's just like a really nice piece of equipment to get your the rest of your equipment around. Yep, to all the things. To all the things. So hope you like this episode. Make sure you like and subscribe. And this is, is the, the way, way we roam. <laughs>